you know, such situations. So that is my first learning. The second one is New Zealand when I was 25, 26 years, but it was the first time I was moving out of my house to live somewhere, which I don't know anything about. Even though I got a lot of counseling, including Jugnu, I remember, first time I met that time as well. And, and I went there, my supervisor and all the people were very comforting. Initially, uh, it was a shock from Delhi, such a big scale difference to going to Wellington. But like after five years, I never wanted to come back. I was like, <laughs> I want to be here. And Wellington is my favorite city as wow. well. It's still now. And so I get to learn so much. And after, you know, just uh, uh, in, within a few weeks of going there, I started teaching as well because that was part of my scholarship. And, and I saw the young, uh, you know, graduate students with whom I was working and they were so much independent. So those, those people also inspired me a lot. So uh, the third uh, key lesson I really got is to value the different point of views. And because New Zealand is truly international, there are people from all over the world. And everyone who has been there, no one wants to go back. So I met, I have so many German friends that I made in New Zealand, and they never wanted to go back to Germany. So it was strange, but then <laughs> everyone is like that. And uh, and I also learned agree to uh, disagree. That was really okay. great thing, uh, I think, because we can value someone's point of view without having to agree to it. And I really like that New Zealand pays a lot of attention and it really values the nature and people with diversity. So, and inclusiveness, what New Zealand mm -hmm. has is, I think we can learn a lot. So I think that is pretty much my takeaways. And there are more, but I think we don't have time. <laughs> no, no, that's not that's not well within your time. Um, I was really listening to you with so much attention because I also relate to the fact that a good education is so much more than you know having access to even good books or good professors. It's really about the whole experience. Uh, and I think it speaks volumes that both of you have found favorite cities in New Zealand from your short time there. Um, and uh, in terms of your experiences, in terms of the independence, like for me, I studied history. Uh, abroad as well, but it wasn't about the dates at all. It was just about really learning how to navigate in a foreign culture, how to use a washing machine, how to use public transport, things that when you come from a protected background in India, perhaps, um, you don't, you're a little nervous about doing. And it really teaches you again how to hold your own, how to have an independent way of thinking, how to respect other people's points of views and other cultures, and yet represent your own and be proud of your own. So that's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Shabana, for sharing that. And now that brings me to Surbi. Um, and you have a wonderful background in sport, and of course you're very passionate and continue to be about sport, and that must have been a natural um, reason for you to want to go to New Zealand. Uh, we've heard about the skydiving. Um, uh, can you tell me perhaps three of your favorite activities at three. university there? Uh, must experience or experience, yes. <laughs> Second, I would say, well, everybody says skydiving and bungee jumping, but I would go for the treks, the jungle walks, and the treks. I will go with you on those treks. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I would love to come with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, forest, I was probably, I was standing on a mountain with a blue lake on my right and a green lake on my left. Wow. It was beautiful. Um, third one, I would say, would be go for the hot springs. So yes. they just have these natural hot springs where you can just go for a dip. Uh, my favorite one was uh, at the Cathedral Cove, where you just go with a spade with your friends. Like, go on a road trip, go with a spade with your friends, dig at the beach, and there's got to be hot water. To be in the outdoors, to be in a natural environment that has so much to offer, and yeah. you can also learn from this, is wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I, uh, is it too late for me to go to New Zealand as a student? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It's never too late, right? And we have. All of the New Zealand universities here ready to sign you up. So we, so. we shall chat. Yeah, we shall. Uh, because I, um, I think that this is an experience. I mean, you're speaking with so much passion, and I'm definitely feeling that I, you know, I have a few years left, but I want, you know, I don't know about the skydiving, but I, there's an adventurous side of me that I definitely want to explore. And, you know, we can marry that together with some learning, and you know, can take my family along. Yeah, we can arrange something. What's the longest course I can? <laughs> well, then, it's it's quite be, long, Can I be a doctor? It's too late to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I add to that, that piece? I actually had students in my class who were like probably 20, 30 years older than me. Yeah. And just 
Mr. Norman. Thank you, Kiwi Ambassadors, for the, you know, their reflections on coming to New Zealand. And if there's a few things that have come out, one, it's not only that you're going to be powerful for you, uh, and as we've talked about, our New Zealand universities are, are really in the top level of around the world. That's really one thing. But it's actually that broader experience that I think you touched on about how it, it rounds you out as a person. You get to do things, meet people that are going to be different from you, and it's all in a very open and safe environment. That you can you can exchange ideas without threats. You can actually work, work with other people from other cultures. And you know, we've heard you know, his, you know, his friend was an RA, you met some German students that are now your friends. And that's a real, really good lifestyle. Uh, that we talked about, and you heard a lot about the outdoor activities, but also there's a lot of uh, cultural events that you can go to and a whole range of things. I think the other thing that's really important for New Zealand as international students come to Melbourne is that you're bringing your culture to our country as well. And so for our New Zealand students, like Alex, uh, for them to understand the wider world, understand how different people from different parts of the world think, speak, uh, how, they, how they engage is incredible learning for a country uh, like ours and those global connections are just so important. The other thing I think the you know, New Zealanders really making uh, attractive kind of settings so that people can come, they come for their education but then they've got opportunities to explore our country to gain some also accessible and that, that again came through in the comments that have been made today. So we are really uh, very open. Wonderful, thank you Grant. I think um, I really learned a lot from this discussion. I already knew, I have to say, quite a lot of it. <laughs> but it's wonderful to hear people speaking truly passionately. And I think, again, as I said, one of the things that you said was these are friends that you make for life. These yeah. are cities that continue from in New Zealand is far away. But the fact that this world is becoming smaller, more accessible, that cultures are so entwined and we have work and friends and families that now live all over the world. Um, it's just wonderful that your borders, as you said, are recently opened again. And this is, um, you know, an exchange that we want to promote and further. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And thank you, uh, Pran, firstly, for being here and for sharing that. And to our advocates, to Amit, to Shabana, to Surbi for sharing your perspectives. I think that's um, me trying to close this session uh, and handing you the mic back to you, Jugnu, virtually, so that you can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Soha. I think you did a really good job as the interviewer. So that's a new one that you can probably explore. Uh, I can put that on my CV now. And, and yes. And we'll <laughs> yes. yes. We have some media interviews after that. And uh, to all our guests here, please free, uh, feel free to join us for lunch. And um, Soha will be here for a bit um, to answer some questions from the media. Thank you very much for being here today and for all of this beautiful conversations that we've had. A big thank you to all our Kiwi ambassadors for coming over and sharing their um, stories. They were really inspiring for a lot of students like yourselves who are still considering about going to New Zealand and thinking about why. Uh, so you really answered those whys really well. And thank you very much, Grant for um, speaking to the media and uh, giving us all of that conversations about the delegation and what um, what is the strategy that uh, New Zealand is looking at with, uh, in terms of collaborating more with India. And thank you very much, Soha, for advocating all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you.